Um, my name is Ian Faulkner. I, I'm known as the Healthwise Guy, and I accepted this invitation to to uh, come on Prosper the show because I'm just so impressed with what I've seen on his website. And uh, it actually, was actually really good because I uh, I got to talk about uh, health, uh, all three forms of health. Um, Prosper really, really um, uh, picked up what I was saying, which which is obviously very pleasing, and I enjoyed it. I I came on nervous and I left relaxed. That's all you can expect to do in life. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I brought you the health-wise guy, Ian. Ian, how are you doing, my man? Really, really great. Prosper and yourself? Absolutely fantastic. We're healthy, we're wise, and we're going to hear quite a lot from you today. And uh, for those that are watching right now, you would understand that there is a direct relationship between your health, exercise, and your success. And it might sound strange, but consider this for a moment. If you can't do well, you can't, you know, perform, and you, you can't, if you don't feel well, you can't perform well. And we tend to think that sometimes success comes from, you know, when you concentrate all your energy on working all day, in and out, but you wear out if you're not healthy. So that's the reason why we've brought in, um, you know, the health wise guy so that he can elaborate to us how he is helping some of his clients to be, do, and have a happier existence so that they also have uh, businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, Ian, tell us a little bit about your history and how you became the health wise guy. Okay, Prosper, like I'm an engineer by background, mechanical engineer. Um, I spent most of my time involved in the mining industry. Uh, I guess my big break came when I went to work as a young engineer in, uh, in Western Australia for BHP. And uh, I uh, actually became chief engineer at that mine at the age of 25 with a budget of 590 people. So I'm really proud of that achievement. Um, I actually headed back to the city for my children's education. Um, they were getting ready for high school and it was time to come back. And I stayed involved in the mining industry. I um, was supplying um, engineering services and equipment in my area of expertise to the big mining companies. Um, I worked for a, um, uh, a number of German companies who were the best in our uh, technological field. I uh, did projects um, in Asia, Australia, of course, in the Middle East. So I had a really successful uh, career. Um, uh, I actually broke that for a while and went into uh, manufacturing business. Uh, I won't talk about that because it was uh, a, a bit of a disaster. Went back into engineering and at the age of 50, um, I was just exhausted. I, um, I was enjoying the career because I had a lot of uh, credits to my name, but I was exhausted. I um, wasn't well. Um, I wish you had a picture of myself. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see this, but that was me at the age of... 50. <laughs> All right. And, um, uh, I, and I, I show that picture because that's when I got retrenched from my job. Um, there was, a, there was a, some mergers of uh, uh, German companies overseas. And I was told I had to move to Perth from Sydney where I was living. Uh, and I'd already moved. I'd lived in Victoria where I come from. I worked in two places in Queensland and Western Australia. Sydney, I didn't want to disrupt my family again. I had my first grandchild, so I didn't want to have my wife away from that. So I took retrenchment and um, I um, uh, became an entrepreneur. Uh, I worked at what I was good at and tried to make money from that um, unsuccessfully. Um, I, uh, I was already part of a network marketing company um, and I really loved the products, but I couldn't make money out of that. So five years later, as an entrepreneur at the age of 55, uh, that's that's how I look. I uh, tried a few different things. Um, uh, I actually got into telecommunications, which was uh, in its heyday when the uh, only possibilities were Telstra and Optus. And I started making good money from being a broker in that area. And my engineering background was good. I was able to analyze bills and all that sort of stuff. And I um, uh, did well in that. Unfortunately, the, the company uh, changed. The companies we were uh, representing changed. There was no money left in that. Uh, I got into air purifiers, uh, top technology, a, a company that developed the purifiers from the US space program with NASA. 
Um, just the best technology in the world. I became their top distributor in Australia. Everything was going wonderful. And the American company went bankrupt. And they were bought out by another company. The products were too good to, to go down the drain. But the new company decided to close down their operations around the world and go back to the USA. So there was another failure. Uh, I'm really persistent. But one of my last uh, clients as a telecommunications company um, uh, 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 was, was the chair of a company. And when they went broke, I had a number of distributors. And one of them told me about this um, uh, uh, water ionizer from Japan. And uh, she was very persistent. She talked to me for over 12 months about it. Uh, she was in Brisbane. She, she drove to Sydney overnight at the age of, I think she was 67 then. Um, arrived with her water ionizer, plonked it on my, uh, uh, on my uh, kitchen bench, uh, and she, she was to stay with my wife and myself for six days. And at the end of six days, my health just improved out of, out of sight. Uh, unfortunately, she went out of sight. She went back to Brisbane and took her machine with her, and I had to um, buy a machine. I just couldn't go back to the way I was. So I bought a machine. Um, I imported it from Hong Kong, which was the same voltage as Australia. Um, and I went from having very severe arthritis for more than 20 years to no arthritis. I went from very serious skin infections, which involved um, even a major operation that didn't work. Um, I was just tired, run down, and um, I started drinking this water from this water ionizer. I uh, talked to a few people and, and they uh, tried it and they bought machines. That was all in, that started in January 2010. In, uh, April 2010, I had a call from the Japanese company saying they were impressed with what we were doing. They wanted to open up a subsidiary here in Australia and uh, would I help them? So I took them to real estate agents, I took them to the Direct Selling Association and within two weeks I, uh, I made a recommendation to the founder. The founder flew out here two more weeks later and made the decision. Um, they opened up an office uh, listed in Macquarie Park in Sydney, a uh, well-known area and I haven't looked back. So that started in January 2010 um, by, and that was when I was 55 years old. And um, now at, at this picture here, I was 68 years old. You can't believe it's the same person. Wow, so vital, so vibrant, and so full of energy in that yeah. photo. So now I'm 71 and I feel younger than I was when I was 40. Absolutely. That's a remarkable journey right there, Ian. And thank you so much for sharing. And it's a whole journey of persistence, of vitality. Everything just seemed not to work that you were touching. And, um, but you, it didn't stop you. I mean, when, when that other company in Germany folded or that other company in the States folded, didn't you think this was enough? I'm, I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to keep pursuing this entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, look, the, the feeling that I should do something like that, like, just going to, um, I mean, I was too old to get a, a good job, so maybe I could go on the dial. Um, uh, maybe as I got to uh, retiring age, I should um, uh, get a pen, get the pension. All these thoughts passed through my mind, but I know I'm better than that. So I just look for the next opportunity to, to come along. And you know, if you look hard enough, if you really want it, uh, it, it appears. Absolutely, and uh, we, without, you know, you know, just looking at your story and hearing it all, all right now, we, we don't actually realize that, you know, we've got so much more to give, so much more life ahead of us. And if some people just see one failure ahead of them or one hurdle, they already crumble and um, they still heads to go. So what do you then attribute all this persistence and vigor that you have, um, you know, that, that's not stopping you um, no matter how many times you've been knocked back? Well, I, I, know, I know I've got a lot to give. Uh, but let me just do, by way of explanation, look, we talk about true health. Yeah. And true health is not just physical health. Right. There are three kinds of health. Financial health, emotional health, and physical health. And if you don't have all three of them, you really don't have health. That, that's our philosophy, our company's philosophy. Well, by the company has been going 43 years. So it's not uh, an overnight... Um, Success. It, it took the company 43 years. It took, in fact, it took them 30 odd years to actually leave Japan and actually go to America, and then to a few other countries, and then Australia. So they focus on on true health. So if you don't have the financial health, the other two will suffer. 
if you don't have emotional health, some people call it spiritual health, there's different thoughts about that. If you don't have that, you don't have true health, the other two will suffer. If you don't have physical health, as it was my problem, you don't have the other two either. So my success really and my drive is that I know that I have something to offer to people. If I'd given up, there would be over a thousand people who, as a result of me joining this business, who would not have the health that they have now. That, that, if, you're, if you're contributing, if you're doing things, that's the emotional health I talk about. And I've achieved that with this business. Absolutely. So obviously you've got to have an anchor, something that's larger than you in order for you to keep going. And, and right. Because I'm speaking from a millennial point of view there, Ian, if you can indulge me for a second, whereby we don't actually realize that dedicating ourselves to just work can only just lead us to failure. You know what I mean? We just brought up to hustle, hustle, hustle. And if it doesn't work, um, it leads to a lack of motivation. It, it actually distracts us from our physical and mental health. And um, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of tenacity, a lot of vigor. And now you've brought in those three other elements to, um, you know, health that, you know, constitutes to you um, striving to the things that we want, such as your career and meeting your family's needs, which you did all along the way. Now, for somebody who is just listening to this and thinking, oh, I'm cut from a different cloth, what sort of advice would you give to them, um, Ian? You know, just basing on, on where you've been, what we've discussed now, and, you know, where other people find themselves in life. Like when you mentioned millennials, uh, I, I originally just focused on baby boomers. I mean, people my age, you know, people think they're bulletproof in their health up to the age of 40. They get to 40 and they realize it's not true. I really realise that you've got to do something about your, your health. So I was only talking about baby boomers, but a couple of years ago, I actually started talking to millennials because they're missing in health is this emotional health. They want to mean something. They want to contribute. And somehow they're not. You look at the, the, the top pop stars that commit suicide. They've got everything. They've got money. They've got adulation. But for some reason or other, it's not enough. It's this emotional health not being able to contribute. And, 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 to me, uh, to someone looking, you know, where am I, which path do I want to take, find out what you can do to contribute to other people and success will come anyway. If you can contribute, success will come anyway. Absolutely. I also have the values, I mean, the company itself has the values of you leave, you learn and you contribute. And um, in, in, in the leaving is the part that you've done from all the, you know, ups and downs you've gone through. You've learned, um, you know, from the mistakes of, you know, the companies that didn't go, go well. You've, you've taken lessons from there that now you are contributing to the health and welfare of a lot of people. Um, in what you do, I mean, obviously, as a health-wise guy, is exercise part of the essentials or is it just the, um, you know, the, the, the tools that you bring to your clients? Okay, I, um, I've always exercised. Uh, I have a swimming pool. And when I had a really bad arthritis, uh, and I had it from my mid-30s, and my mother had it, so something in my genes, I believe. But to keep it under control, I swam every day, 365 days a year in our pool, did laps, just to keep the symptoms under control. I ate less meat, I, ate, I drank less alcohol, all to keep the symptoms under control. So I've always exercised. But still, you saw the pictures. It wasn't enough. Absolutely. It wasn't until I found what I call the missing link that I actually did exercise actually um, became beneficial. And the missing link is we're just dehydrated. And dehydration leads to toxins in our body. It leads to tiredness. So when people exercise, they give up because they get tired. Their joints don't work. It's because they're dehydrated. If people want to, want to go on a diet to lose weight. Most diets don't work. Well, diets do, but the people don't allow it to work because they're dehydrated. Right. Um, my, my key to it is that if I didn't hydrate my body with this, with this uh, what I call health-giving water, if I didn't hydrate my body, I would still be the same as I was 10 years ago. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things there, that the elimination of toxins, the reduction of, you know, unwanted, um, you know, baddies in our bodies, because obviously that then leads to a positive and, you know, vitality and a positive and energetic, uh, energetic person is always a winner and everybody else around them um, can actually sense it. So what is it that the, um, the, 
the water actually does to your body? Does it release hormones or does it, which part does it actually attack? Okay, the, um, every liquid on this planet has a voltage. And you can measure it. I actually measure um, the voltage of liquids for people. If it's positive, it's actually um, happening to aid your cells and, and, and damage your cells. If it's a negative electrical charge, it's actually an antioxidant, it's actually getting into your cells. I won't go too much into the science, but the only way that nutrition get into your cells is dissolved in water. The only water, way water can get into your cells is to pass through a thing called, if you want to Google it sometime, aquaporin. Aqua as in water, pore as in the pores of your skin. Those aquaporins are negatively charged. There's a passage through this that's negatively charged, sorry, that's positively charged. So negatively charged water like our water will get into the cells and bring in the nutrition. Positively charged water like tap water, bottled water, all those drinks that people um, drink sometimes for their health like um, sports waters and that, they, most of it just does not get into the cells, it doesn't do you any good. So the big thing with our water is this negative charge. The negative charge also happens to make the water alkaline. Now, people talk about alkaline water and they think about chemicals, adding chemicals into the water. It's the worst way you can make water alkaline. You'd need to do that with electricity the way the Japanese have learned to do. As I say, the Japanese company is 43 years old. Japanese live longer than anybody else in, on the planet. And most Japanese have access to this water. Absolutely. Right. So, I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that anything that comes naturally is really good for you. So how come they exist nowhere, even, um, you know, in, in, in the in the mountains where the, that water, that spring water trickles for generations that they then sell us. Um, how come they exist in, in, in nature, water that's not negatively charged? Well, if water, it's that good for us. Water in nature is actually negatively charged. Oh, okay. So how, how then, so, how so, then did it come out positive? Uh, so, at the so, so the trouble, trouble is that we had so, we as a society add so many chemicals into the water that it actually turns it back to a positive charge. Um, there are some places in the world, um, in the Himalayas, uh, there are famous tribes there that live longer than anybody else in the world. Right. Uh, and it, it's, just, it's just water, the water they drink. Um, some of the people who have been there, the scientists have been able to study it. The only difference they can see is from them and other tribes is the water they drink. There's a place in, uh, in Mexico where people flock there for water because it's negatively charged. It, it happens to not been affected by the, the, um, the chemicals we put in. So people say, okay, well, I, I get water from, um, uh, from, from the, the Sydney Waters Dams or Melbourne Water Board Dams. Um, isn't that okay? The trouble is it comes from rain. Rainwater is very acidic. It's actually full of chemicals. And in order to make the water safe, they put a lot of chlorine and other sanitizers in the water all these things are making the water, first of all, acidic, but secondly, giving it this positive charge. Right. Now, Prosper, do you know anybody at all who is overweight or even obese? Do you know anybody? Um, a, fair few, a fair few, yes. And do you know any of those who have tried diets, have tried exercise, and are still overweight? I, I was blaming it on the mindset thing because if your body still thinks you're you're overweight, you're never going to lose that weight. So I didn't realize it had a lot to do with the, your hydration. Okay, so your kidneys have the job of keeping your toxins under control in your body. Right. To some degree, the liver, but mainly the kidneys. Now, if the kidneys cannot dissolve and get rid of the toxins in your body on a particular day, in order to protect your body from those toxins, will coat those toxins with fat uh. and store that fat in your body. Now, when we used to drink alkaline fluids, when the water was natural, or in areas where it is natural, alkaline water will dissolve fat. Part of my demonstration to people is, I actually take ordinary tap water, I take some fat, uh, and I dissolve, and it won't dissolve in water, it just won't mix, we know that from science. If I take our alkaline water and put that on the fat, it immediately dissolves that fat. And that goes on inside our body. If we make our bodies alkaline, if we take alkaline fluids into our bodies, and also alkaline food helps that as well, that helps to dissolve the fat the kidneys have created to protect us against toxins 
and slowly take that out of the out, out through the toilet. Alkaline water, alkaline made with electricity, is absolutely vital to our health. Absolutely. Well, I don't, I don't know anybody on this planet that's taken drank water taken from me, and over a short period of time, like I'm talking about weeks, not years, lost weight. I don't know anybody. Right. Okay. So, I mean, just like everything is coming real to us, we've just recently discovered milk was bad for us. We've just recently discovered meat um, is, is what is causing all these other uh, diseases in and around. Now, the water that we drink, um, there has been claims, um, Ian, I don't know if you're quite well averse with this, that um, the water that we drink from the tap um, actually numbs the pineal gland that we have within our brain. I don't know if you're well aware with that. Is the alkaline water that you're talking about not going to affect anything to do with the brain structure and how we know life to be? Well, let me tell you, if you drink, we, we, we don't sell water. We sell a machine that creates the water. Right. It takes ordinary tap water. We, hit it, we put through a filter to make it safe, like any good filter. It takes out chlorine and heavy metals. We hit it with electricity. We split it into two streams coming out of the machine. Alkaline water, which is for drinking, and acidic water, which is for our, outside of our bodies. We acidic on the outside, alkaline on the inside. So we use both waters. Now, if you drink it straight from the machine, you can actually feel a quavering in your brain within 30 seconds. Because one of the things our machine does is release uh, molecular hydrogen from the water and it actually goes up into the brain almost instantly. And there's actually a doctor in America, you could Google her, she's, um, what's her name? Um, uh, let me come, um, Dr. Corinne Allen. And she has a clinic where she treats people with brain issues. So it can be ADHD, it can be early onset dementia, it can be brain damage, it can be aneurysms, it can be car accidents, whatever. She treats people with brain issues. And the centre part of her treatment is our water from our machine. And she gets it, people to drink it straight from the machine in order to get this effect. Because when that hydrogen goes up there, it's actually very, very small uh, molecules. It actually gets in stuff reconnecting some of those electrical circuits that break down as we get older. So does it affect the brain? Yes, positively. Absolutely. And storage wise, just, um, you know, I'm just thinking maybe you're an athlete, you store it in a container, how many containers that we have contain some sort of other chemicals as well that react to, um, you know, the normal tap water. Is that the same with the alkaline water as well after you've stored it? Well, um, we, we recommend, first of all, that you drink straight from the machine because okay. it's got the full electrical charge uh, um, in the water. Um, because of electrical charge, over time it dissipates. Right. So after about four or five days, the electrical charge, which was it's coming out of the machine about minus 500 millivolts, by after about five days, it's almost back to zero. So you lost that very, very important property of the electrical charge. If I, uh, sometimes I put people on a water trial, I, I do that very often, um, I'll always deliver, or they'll pick up water, and uh, depending on the circumstances, twice a week. That's part of the deal. Because at the end of half a week, the property is starting to drift down, um, and they need to have fresher water. Now, in terms of the, 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 the bottles that water stored in, um, most uh, uh, bottled water, it comes in very nice, clear, soft um, uh, plastic bottles. Yeah. Um, the reason it's nice and clear and soft plastic for marketing reasons is it contains a very, very dangerous chemical, a hormone disruptor. Now, if you put water in one of those bottles uh, and you drink it within a week, no problems. The amount of chemical will leach out is negligible. But bottled water is in the bottle. If it's local water, at least two months. It can be as long as six months. If it's imported water, it's at least six months and can be as long as 18 months. Over time, that chemical will actually leach out and cause problems. It's actually called, the name of the chemical is BPA, bisphenol something or other. Um, there's a really good website that people can check is ewg.org. EWG stands for Environmental Working Group. It's a non-profit organisation 
and they, they test all America's major bottled waters um, annually. So they put a report annually of all the bottled waters in America. Um, they talk about the chemicals in the water. They, uh, they, they're not aware of uh, these electrical charges and things. That's um, sophisticated for them. Uh, and they also test for bacteria. And I think the last report said something like 40 plus 41, 42% of bottled water in America contains bacteria. Wow. <laughs> so we don't recommend to anybody to drink bottled water. Uh, the other big issue with bottled water cause is, um, is uh, uh, plastic waste. Like it's becoming a huge problem. Yeah. And in fact, I noticed the millennials are some of the people, I've been to two uh, movie showings here in Sydney where 90% of the people, in fact, 95% of the people there were m uh, millennials, worried about the future of the planet. And these two movies were about plastic. One was called The Plastic Ocean. Uh, I recommend people watch it. You'll cry, but you need to watch it. And um, the problem is uh, bottled water is a single-use plastic. Now, the bottled water suppliers, they recommend that you don't refill their bottles. Do you know why? Because if you did, they wouldn't sell water. You keep putting tap water in there. <laughs> the only people advocating not refilling what they call single-use bottles are the bottled water manufacturers. So I say to people, if you've got a, a, an empty Mount Franklin bottle or something and you want to take some water with you, there's no problem filling it up and, and drinking from that. But they say uh, the, uh, the reason not to use, uh, reuse single-use plastics is that you get bacteria in it. That's all a function of cleaning. If you have a, a wonderful stainless steel bottle like I've got, I still have to clean it from time to time to stop bacteria growing in there. So single-use plastics are a miss in terms of bottled water. So I recommend nobody drinks bottled water. And if you want to reuse the bottles, just make sure they're clean and they'll be fine. Absolutely. Well, this this has been very educational, and now I'm having to consider my water drinking habits. <laughs> yes. And see and see how I can you know energize and um, you know uh, maintain the vitality because, like I said right at the start, um, Ian, you can't do well if you don't feel well, and if you know your 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 water is not being looked after, which you know, constitutes part of your vitality, then, you know, you're missing out on a great deal of, um, you know, nutrients and also adding to the toxins that you could be getting rid in your body. Now, Ian, people would be, have been watching this and this has been interesting for, um, you know, a, a few, uh, you know, people that are concerned about their health. How can um, people get a hold of you then? Oh, look, my, my name is the health wise guy. So the, the issue and my, real, my real name's Ian. So it's Ian at healthwiseguy.com. Absolutely. And, um, you know. If anyone um, doesn't like sending emails, they want to contact me directly. Uh, my phone number is 0425 23 So it's Ian at healthwiseguy.com. 0425 Absolutely, and you've let this number on the Abbott uh, listing, right? Because right. that's where I'm going to be putting this video there so that people can actually get to understand who you are, what it is that you do, and how you can uh, absolutely help them there. Now, Ian, this has been a pleasure. I have learned quite a fair few um, of things that... Presentations. Half of the times, half of the times we take these things for granted... Um, you know what I mean? We just pick up a bottle of water, swing it down, but not really particularly paying attention as to where it's going or the aftermath of the bottle itself. And um, you have shared a bit of light as to what and what not to do and how to actually be, do and have, um, you know, a happier existence. Now, I can't thank you enough, um, you know, Ian. Is there any sort of last um, words that you might have? It's 2018, people might be going on new resolutions, and uh, you know, new beginnings, if there is something that you just want to um, drive across, this might be um, a, a great opportunity. Yeah, look, I, I'm 71 years old, and I get asked all the time, when are you going to retire, Ian? And my answer is, and it's my favourite saying, if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never do a day's work in your life. Wow. 
Wow. And that's what I'm doing. I'm helping people. Uh, people are getting results. I'm seeing that. They're thanking me. That's all I need. And look, I, I, I'm not working hard. Uh, I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never work it down your life. Thanks, Prosper. I think, I think you're leaving somewhat of a legacy because if you would, you shifted the way I thought. And, you know, that hasn't happened in the last 34 years of my life. So, so you, you're doing tremendous work for those that you're actually working with. And I really recommend that if you're watching this right now and you've reached, um, you know, to this part of this video, just reach out to Ian and figure out how else, you know, you too can have the vitality and the longevity that other people in other parts of the world are having. And like what Ian says, if you're doing what you absolutely love, you'd never work a day in your entire life. Now, Ian, I can't thank you enough for the expertise, the love that you have for your work and the motivation that you've just passed on to other people because nobody would have thought that at 71, you would still be doing what you love and still be showing up on, on, on shows like this. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Prosper. Absolutely.